Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Courtney Ryan, and today I'm gonna to be talking about hypergamy and female nature. I know a lot of you guys have been looking forward to this video. I've brought it up like in little bits in past videos that I've done, but I've never really done an entire video dedicated to this, and I think it's important, and it really does affect modern dating and you guys as well, so let's get started. You might not like some of the things that I say today, and to that I will say, don't shoot the messenger. I'm really just trying to be as transparent as possible, and during the video, I'm actually going to be referencing some articles that I found that I think do a really good job explaining it um, and give you guys just a little bit more context from some other perspectives as well. So some of you guys might be thinking, what is hypergamy? So hypergamy is the act or practice of courting or marrying a person of higher socioeconomic or social class than oneself. Translation, dating or marrying up and specifically for women. Let's be real here and totally honest. If you were to go interview women on the street, if you were to go ask women, chances are they would prefer someone who makes at least as much money as they do or more money than they do. Take a look at Kevin Samuels, the Fresh and Fit podcast, or really any other channel out there that brings girls on and asks them questions like this. Now, I don't wanna put everyone in the same box and say that every single woman would say this. I think there are women out there that maybe don't care as much as other women do, um, especially women who maybe don't care as much about a luxurious, uh, lavish lifestyle. Maybe they just wanna live a little bit more traditionally. Um, I doubt that they care. And even then, I do think that most women out there, and emphasis on most, prefer someone who makes more money than they do for that extra security factor to feel safer when it comes to financials. Even if they are making you know, enough money to support themselves and maybe their family, they still want someone who makes more. So I wanna get to the reason why that's the case. And I actually found two articles. One was from Women's Health and the other one was from Men's Health. And it was interesting to see uh, the differences between the two. There were similarities and correlations and a lot of overlap, um, but it was just interesting to kind of see the difference. I know that a lot of guys have a problem with hypergamy and the fact that women are constantly looking for someone, you know, that makes more money than they do or maybe has a higher social status than they do. What's always really interesting to me is when I see men talk about this online because I think a lot of times women who, you know, tend to go for a man that makes more money than her or someone with a higher social status, they kind of tend to give women like that a bad rap. They're called gold diggers, uh, materialistic, shallow, the list goes on. But what's really funny to me is that women from every socioeconomic status tend to go for men who make more money, like I said, even if she is making a good amount of money herself. So often I don't think it really comes from a place of, you know, being malicious or trying to take a guy for everything he has. I think it is about this feeling of safety and security that's been kind of ingrained into us to look for in a partner. And since women are continuously becoming more successful when it comes to finances, uh, their careers, education, socially, um, it's becoming more difficult for men to kind of meet that criteria that they're looking for, you know, as women are entering workforces that they maybe weren't in in the past and they're making more money than their male peers or men in other industries where they maybe don't make as much money, you know, the balance there is really odd. And I was reading this article and came across something super interesting that says, even as women earn more university degrees than men, they are still 93%, 93%, that's a high percent, more likely to marry men with higher incomes, according to a 2016 study conducted by the University of British Columbia. And though higher incomes don't necessarily equate to a higher social class, financial security is one of the main drivers of female hypergamy. And I mean, when you think about it, it's incredibly true. If I look at every single woman in my life, I don't know one that is married to or dating a man that makes less money than she does. We often, I think, just tend to seek out men who are better off than we are, even if we don't necessarily need to. If any of you know anybody where the dynamic is that the woman is making more than the man, please share down below because I would be super interested to hear about it because just through my lens and my perspective and my you know personal life, I don't know anybody like that. And I think that's very interesting. So why do we as women do this if we don't even necessarily need to? We are more financially successful than ever. We are more educated than ever before, and yet we're still looking for men who are somehow better off than we are. 
Well, the article explained it for us, and it says, this may be an evolutionary callback to the prehistoric woman's need for a capable provider. There are inherited tendencies for some women to be attracted to men who have more means, which goes back to our roots as hunters and gatherers. Similarly, there are inherited tendencies for some men to feel attracted to women who appear more fertile. Example, wide hips, long hair, that said, we are the only species who has the capacity to be consciously aware of those tendencies and we have moved beyond them as a primary driver for mating in today's more modern world. And although I do think there are a lot of women who don't necessarily care about that as much, I do think the majority still do, even though we don't need to. Men want a woman who they find attractive and there is an evolutionary underpinning to what men deem attractive, says Fisher. Attractiveness in this context means that those women show signs of health, youth and fertility. That's why many men will marry down in social class for someone with superior looks. And it totally makes sense when you think about it. Women want the guys who are more successful, who have created an empire, who make more money, and men want a woman who, you know, maybe doesn't have the best job, maybe isn't anywhere high on the social status, but is attractive. And I think this makes a ton of sense when you look at men who make a ton of money and the woman that they're with and women who are very beautiful and attractive and the man that they are with so it kind of lines up and it makes sense and i think the reason why there's a little bit of a kind of shift in the way that people feel about this is because the world has changed women are making a lot more money women are more educated women are you know higher up in the social class than ever before so that need for a man who has that is becoming significantly less but people who want a relationship women specifically who want a relationship want to be married are still going for that top percentage of men who meet that criteria. So the available pool of men is shrinking. So an interesting thought I wanna leave you guys with in the comments is what is going to happen as women continue to become more financially successful, more educated, better off than most men are? Women will have no choice but to either marry down, go after the top percentage of men, which I think is what is currently happening, or not get married at all. When the entire pool of women are going after for a tiny pool percentage of men, there's obviously going to be women who don't get what they want. And I think that those women end up becoming uh, resentful, bitter, hate men, say that men aren't good enough, say that there's no good men out there or no good men left because they feel like they've all already been taken. And it's gonna be interesting to see how this dynamic continues to change for men and women because men are either going to have to rise up or be forever single like some of these women are going to be. So it's very interesting and I would love to hear what you guys think down in the comments below, but hypergamy is real, it does exist and I think it even exists to a point where when a woman gets what she thinks she wants or gets someone successful, then she just constantly wants more or wants better, right? The same way a man gets an attractive woman, but then gets that attractive woman and thinks, oh, there's someone more attractive than her. And so then he gets someone with a bigger butt or better hair or a better face, you know what I mean? So I do think it's kind of the same in the sense where men are going after the most beautiful and attractive women. They get an attractive woman and then they see someone more attractive and cheat on her with the more attractive woman. So it's kind of just everyone constantly going for the next best thing or looking for the next best thing and being unsatisfied with their decisions. It's kind of a mess. And I do think it all comes from a place of us always wanting more, wanting better, never feeling satisfied. And I'm not gonna go too much into that because I did an entire video on why people are never satisfied that I think everybody should watch. So if you haven't seen that, definitely be sure to check it out. But let me know what you guys think in the comments below. I think we can all come to the conclusion today that hypergamy is very real, it exists, and I'm interested to see kind of how it plays out in the future of modern dating and you know the dynamic between men and women. So let me know what you think down below. We'd love to get a conversation going a healthy, constructive conversation uh, down in the comments. If you haven't already, be sure to follow me on Instagram at Courtney Christine Ryan. I love connecting with all of you guys on there as well. As always, thank you all so much for watching and I will see you all next time.